dedicated to helping business owners excel in the digital world. This is The Path to Growth. On this episode, I discuss how to leverage user-generated content, or UGC, to boost your brand trust and authenticity. So the first question that you might be asking is, what is user-generated content? So you already know about blog posts and social media posting that either you or someone within your business uh, performs on your behalf. So what user-generated content is, is not the stuff that you post, but the stuff that your audience posts or your customers Uh, which probably are your customers, not really audience, but it's what your customers post. Because in order for them to post user-generated content about you, they hopefully would have used your product and uh, they would have posted some sort of a review or some sort of an experience uh, regarding your brand. User-generated content is not limited to one channel. So You can find user-generated content across Facebook, Instagram, uh, your website. If you have comments on your blog, uh, that would definitely be user-generated content. Um, Reviews on your Google listing, reviews on Yelp. I mean, the, the the amount of media that can produce user-generated content is, you know, There's a limit, but it's a very big limit. Um, There's actually probably media out there that you have no idea about. In fact, there are services that actually offer you the ability to get alerts if someone else mentions your brand. Uh, A big one that we actually work with is Brand24. And what they do is, uh, for example, say you're Doritos um, and you, uh, you put out a Super Bowl ad. What you can do is you can have uh, a keyword monitor on your, you know, you could on Doritos or, uh, you know, anything pertaining to your brand, keywords, specific keywords to your brand. And you could monitor how many people are talking about it. And you could see the impact that that type of media can have on your brand when you can't measure it as well as you want to. Um, You know, that's like, uh, you know, it's like Facebook ads. You can measure Facebook ads, but you don't know. If someone else is talking about it and maybe it doesn't attribute to your brand specifically um, through that campaign. So you could set up brand monitoring for your, you know, your your restaurant or your uh, online shop with your brand name or something similar to your brand name. And it'll alert you and it'll say, you know, you there's been a, a huge blowout of. Uh, monitoring for your brand. And you could really, really tell how well your brand is performing with these keyword monitoring tools Um, because it really does help you see how much your marketing efforts are being amplified. And that's definitely a form of user-generating content. Um, A tool like that will help you in discovering which user-generated content uh, is helping you the most because You might be marketing in one spot, but the most of your user-generated content is already on that spot. So you could dedicate that marketing to some other channel that you would have no idea about. That's why it's so important to monitor um, user-generated content because you really don't know where your marketing is hitting if you're not measuring what's going on. How can you tell? The only way you're the only way that business owners, let's be real, a lot of business owners look at their Instagram or their Facebook and they'll say, eh, you know, I didn't get that many likes, so I don't think it's doing too well. But that doesn't mean anything. Uh, I'm on Facebook and TikTok throughout the day sometimes, and half the stuff that I actually really do like, I don't like because either I'm too lazy or I don't want to get bothered with more ads pertaining to that because, you know, people are smart. It's Facebook's been around for a long time. 
So they're not, it's not like they're new to Facebook and they're like, oh, if I hit this like button, I'm not going to get more ads that pertain to that product. You are because people retarget. We do campaigns for our clients where we retarget based off of if that person has engaged with your ad or not. So a lot of the time you can't really go by measurements like that because some people just don't perform those actions on your content. But what they will do is, They'll talk about it and because they don't really know if you have brand monitoring set up or not, but they'll talk about it. They'll share it with their friends or they'll make a comment and say, oh, you know, at they'll mention with the little at symbol, they'll mention their friend, their friend, and they'll say, we have to go there tonight. And how do you know if that's pertaining to your brand or not? Um, You know, that's why it's very important to set up these monitoring tools. But in any event. User generated content, uh, this is why user generated content is so important. Because when other people see on your page what type of user generated content is happening across uh, the online universe, um, across your brand and across your brand channels, um, they'll start to see how authentic all of this is. It's not like you're putting out an ad where you're on camera and you are saying, oh, try our product because it's great. That's the equivalent of, you know, sitting down in a restaurant and you ask the waiter, you know, how's the steak here? You know, like, what is he going to say? He's going to say it sucks. Don't get it. No, he's going to say the steak is unbelievable. Matter of fact, get the most expensive one. So the way you have to think about this is if somebody else is sticking their neck out to let people know that your product is good and they don't work for you and they weren't paid by you, then that's considered great user generated content to take advantage of because other people are going to see that and they're going to say, Oh, and especially if it's like their friend, you know, they're going to, if you put out a post with a review and somebody who hasn't been to your restaurant just stumbles across your page and they see, Oh, that's my friend, Sarah. They featured her in a review post and she said, it's good. It's got to be good. And that's it. Now you just got a customer for free um, using organic content. So it's very important to, you know, if there's a strategy involved, I mean, obviously you have to look and see, you know, which reviews you want, you know, you're not going to pick a star or one star review and feature that. So, you know, you got to use your head a little bit and you got to see which reviews are worth showcasing. And if people made great content, you know, on, on their phone, like if someone had, if, if your restaurant or let's just use a product, for example, if you, if somebody made a TikTok and featured and tagged you and said, Hey, I I bought this product from your convenience store and it works great. Um, they're going to mention, you know, and I, and as I was in there, I wouldn't have known about it if it wasn't for Bob who had great customer service, blah, blah, blah. doesn't matter if they tagged the product that you're selling. You don't care about that. You care about tagging your store and the experience that that customer had in your store. Repost it and reshare it. Make a comment on it. Make a comment on that post so people know that you respond also onto that user-generated content. It's not just about using user-generated content. It's also about perceive, you know, you receiving the content and providing feedback as well. That's what people care about. You know, that would be like taking a selfie, you know, with a rock star and he posts that you're going to be like, oh man, he, he posted the selfie with me. You know, that's like a feed. That's like, it's almost like feedback. Like, oh, he likes the selfie. Um, you know, it's the equivalent. Of, you'd be surprised. You make a comment on someone's page and they're a celebrity and they comment back. Yeah, I, I'll make your day. Just, you know, that's customers, too. They're going to be like, oh, look, the, the 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 convenience store, they liked my comment. So apparently they care about what people have to say about their brand. Um, so, yeah, I mean, once you have the user generated content, um. You know, the next step is you create content and there's there's an unlimited amount of resources on making content. Doesn't have to be a graphic if you're not good at making graphics. It could be just a, a post. It could be 
you know, a picture of that customer or it could be a pic. It could be their content. You take a screenshot with your phone. doesn't matter what the quality looks like. No one cares. Take a picture, do a screenshot, repost it and say, hey, thanks, Lorraine. This is great. Uh, you know, we love you guys. We love our customers and tag them. That's it. That's a piece of content. And if you really want to go into more details on how to create content, um, you know, there's if you go on canva.com, I mean, they have millions of templates like and now with all this AI, you could just type what you want. You could literally type into there. They had they just released it today, actually, or not today, but uh, this week. It's it's like a magic AI tool. You could type in there, you know, and it's powered by like chat GPT and all that stuff. You you could type in there, uh, review post and whack enter. You could even put the wording. You could put review post and paste in all the wording and, and whack the inner key and it'll make a design for you. I mean, come on. It's like right there. So just get that content, get it up, get it out there and then see what your audience, you know, responds with. And just add, you know, 30 hashtags or whatever and and call it a day. I mean, that's content creation. That's literally like if you have 100 reviews on Google or I mean, a lot of restaurants that have been open for a long time, they have thousands of reviews and that's just on Google. That's a thousand pieces of content. I mean, and, you know, you don't want to like you don't want to drown your feed into user generated content. But why don't you make it a point to put on your calendar once a week, twice a week, or three times a week, you put out user-generated content. That's free content. You don't, have to worry, you don't have to come up with an idea that day. You have it right in front of you. So, you know, stuff like that, um, it helps you to grow your brand, grow trust, because now people will trust you more um, if you know, if you have no fear, at a, you know, in putting out user generated content, people trust you more. If you need any help with creating a content calendar for your brand, I'm going to leave a link in the um, description of this podcast episode. I wrote an article and it'll actually show you how to like go to Canva, how to click on designs and all that stuff. Um, it'll really help you in the long run because no one has time throughout the day through, uh, to, um, you know, to open up their phone, make a post, you might not have that time. So you make this on the time that you do have, and you could schedule things in advance. You use a a platform like later.com. I mean, you're talking about for like their starter plan. I think it's now 15 or 20 bucks a month. Um, and you could schedule posts. I mean, you know, you, you can't really ask for a better time to want to do all this. There's just so many platforms out there that are helping business owners and content creators do all this. So as a business owner who doesn't have time as it is to do anything, this will extremely, this will help you extremely. Um, you know, it'll save you time and it'll keep you consistent. It'll, it'll, it'll make sure you have consistent content out there. That's really it when it comes to user generated content. Um, this isn't really a huge topic to really break down because um, you probably already know what user generated content is uh, after you just, you know, glance over um, your reviews. Like I said, anything that your customers are putting out about you, um, you could use. Uh, and it doesn't have to be textual, also, it could be a video. It could be someone who did a TikTok um, or an image, just an image of a, you know, a a food that they ate, stuff like that. Um, You know, those are perfect examples. So a new uh, a new feature that I added to the blog is you can bookmark and comment on posts. So I actually wrote an article on this so that if you if you want to just. Um, if you want something to reference, uh, I'm going to put that link also in the description. Um, and you could, you know, leave a reply, make an account on the website, on the blog, uh, and bookmark this so that you could reference it later. Um, 
And if you want to listen to it in the car, you can even bookmark the podcast episodes on the website as well. I made a feature on there so that any videos, any anything that's on the website is bookmarkable. So that's videos, um, blog posts, obviously, and uh, audio like the podcast. So this will be on there. Um, and let me know what you think.